in boxing in South Africa in general. Mr. Mateza, good morning and welcome to AM News. Well, good afternoon. Good morning, I'm sorry. It, 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 it was um, really sad this week um, to lose the likes of um, Nick Durant. How would you describe him? Well, Nick Durant was, as I have said, and to many people who asked me this question, is was a larger than life. He was one of the trainers in South Africa. He actually made boxing. He, he, he would, would make boxing very exciting because even though I was doing commentary when he was uh, looking after his boxers, he was in the corner of one of his boxers, he did most of the commentary. Mm. And uh, there's a very famous quote that is many people are making about what I said, Nick Durant said, which I'm not going to repeat here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he was telling the boxer, go and do this to him. And I'm not going to repeat this here. He moved from England to South Africa. Was there a specific reason or he only came here for boxing specifically? No, I, I think what, what, what was said, his father was a, f a professional footballer. He played for Wolverhampton Wanderers mm. and Charlton. Uh, Charlton Athletic and many of those he played with uh, people like in South Africa with uh, people like Walter da Silva people like uh, uh, All the guys who came from Eddie Lewis and all of those mm. guys and when his career came to an end his father opened a shop downtown Johannesburg and Nick who was studying at Cass at the time King Edward mm. and then helped his father in the shop and for some reason they started making a connection with Willie Tawil stable and they sponsored some of their boxers and Nick actually the the, the, the boxing bank mm. began to buy it then from Nick and he became this larger than life person in boxing nobody actually anticipated but now um, most of us know him more or as, as a trainer what, what was he at some point in the ring and was he good now Nick was never a boxer mm -hmm. but he was a good motivator you can see that he actually took time to learn his trade and he was very good at looking after boxers mm -hmm. motivating boxers and also uh, actually uh, drive them to the limit uh, in their career. He was the first boxer, for instance, to take a rather raw uh, Philip Ndo mm. to the United States to fight Mayweather. And Ndo lost in the eighth round. And he was actually, many people didn't know what Nick was trying to do. What Nick was trying to do was actually to test his limits and those of his boxer. Mm. Now, speaking of his boxers, um, what would you say were some of his highlights? Some of the highlights, the first boxer Nick actually s uh, made people sit and take note was when he took a, everybody thought, Sugar Boy Malinga, who came from a famous Malinga family down in Ladysmith. Mm. So everybody thought Sugar Boy Malinga was over the hill. And this fight came up for Sugar Boy Malinga, the WBC junior heavyweight title fight against uh, Nigel Benn in the United Kingdom. Mm. And Nick took this fight and trained Sugar Boy Malinga and took him there. And Sugar Malinga, you know what? Became the WBC mm. world junior heavyweight champion, the first South African boxer to win a WBC title. We've spoken, of course, about his success um, in, in the game of boxing. Let's talk about his frustrations when engaging with him. What would you say were some of um, the frustrating elements of the game in his life? One of the biggest problems for Nick, Nick was looking ahead. Nick was far ahead of the people who run boxing in this country, including myself when I was acting CEO. Mm. Nick always wanted to have things done without the rigor of going to the law, going to the act. You know, boxing is governed by an act of parliament. Mm. And unfortunately, you can't do things that are outside of the act and the regulations. But Nick was see, looking forward, and he was frustrated largely by that, also by the fact that uh, South Africa never was able to get the big money fights for their boxers in South Africa. Mm. If they wanted to get big money fights, they had to go outside of South Africa and go and fight in America, go and fight in the UK. That's where they made the money. On top of that, what Nick did on his trips to America, because he knew his limitations as a trainer, mm. he made friends with top trainers around the world, the Duba brothers, the, the uh, Pernal Whitaker, and all of these guys who were training other boxers overseas. And he took his boxers there for camps to see how the others are training. Mm. Now let's talk about um, uh, boxing in South Africa, um, the state of boxing in SA as um, Nick Durand is no longer with us. Do you think he's happy wherever he is with the state of boxing in South Africa presently? That's, that's precisely the reason why Nick, Nick announced last year mm. that he was getting out of boxing because he didn't see any progress going forward. You know, one of the biggest problems is in our sport in South Africa, boxing is a sport of the poor, the sport of the people who come from the ghetto. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, I had the chairman when I was CEO of Boxing South Africa, um, Toby Chamsashe, who made a very good, uh, who, who said, who coined a very good term. He said, boxing, for many boxers who come from the townships and the rural areas, is a middle ticket out of poverty. And we have really mismanaged the sport. We haven't done what we are supposed to do with the sport. Boxing, as I tell you, could become a sport that can look after all its boxers. But unfortunately, you need strategies, you need a plan, you need uh, a vision, you need all of these things. And finances, you need a reliable broadcaster, because broadcasting is everything to any sport in this country, in this world. Of course, there you have it. Um, that's SABC broadcaster and also boxing commentator, Dumila Mateza, joining us to talk about the life of Nick Duranta, who, of course, passed away this past week. May his soul rest in peace.